dispelled. Yeah, I was, so I was just sitting there thinking, you know, I should be making relaxing music like that. And I was really saying, it was me that made that relaxing music, but I was thinking, now this is an example of the uh, the uh, conflicts that go on in the creative mind. The uh, Once you open up the sluice gates and it starts rolling through, um, it's really difficult to control the flow. It's very, very powerful. And uh, how you apportion your time and attention um, is uh, one of the bigger challenges I've ever come across. Um, getting things finished, seeing things through to the end, and when you've got lots and lots of different projects going, and the artistic temperament is such that it wants to move from one thing to another without getting too stuck in things, and that's really suddenly totally absorbed and have to, and so on and so forth. And I think the reason I'm saying all this is because it occurs to me from being in the receipt of approximately five to 600 emails every single day, many of which are from people talking about the state they're in, uh, or mentioning it uh, at some point in the email. Um, and the uh, readings, therefore, that I can get are sort of like a cross-section and snapshot of uh, the world. And it's not just the country I'm in at any one time. It will be from all over the world. You kind of get a feel for how things are in general, a bit like the weather. And um, the last two days, three days, I've noticed people have been uh, volatile and um, a little bit unanchored. Uh, there's a sense of, I'm just discerning that people are feeling uh, insecure and a little bit unsure and um, this would be understandable because if you look at what's actually occurring in the world at the moment, the, the uh, intensity of um, uh, the uh, exponential growth of various factors which would be uh, would deplete our well-being and so on and so forth on a global scale it is increasing and so whether people are cognizant of it or not whether they go into denial about it distract themselves from it and so on, which is the norm of course um, it works away at the subconscious level anyway so everybody's processing a lot of information about uh, change really there's a lot of change occurring that's occurring faster and faster and um, which for me is exciting uh, I, I get excited by everything that's happening. It doesn't mean I, I enjoy some of the things that I hear or see um, or condone them. To the contrary, I get incredibly upset with the the way people treat each other uh, on the planet. And uh, not that I'm uh, perfect, nobody is, but I, I mean, always uh, doing my very, very best to respect the sanctity of the other. And um, there are some very sick, psychotic people around, and that's just the way it is, and it's inevitable there would be at this time. Um, and, and that is an example of what I call hell. That's uh, hell that can be perpetuated over a period of time and have an increasingly uh, pernicious effect on the collective. But there's also the hell that we create in each and every moment within ourselves of which that, the big world picture, such as we know of it, because it's all, you know, a lot of disinformation and so on, um, and interpretation, what have you, um, it's a reflection of the inner landscape of each of us as individuals. And um, uh, we have it in our power, in each and every moment, to choose between creating or, or, or manifesting or enjoying, experiencing, choosing, a state of heaven internally or a state of hell. And the state of heaven is one in which um, the awareness that you, without being in denial of any of the suffering, without being in denial of the ferocious nature of existence, and an ability to accommodate the yin and the yang of it, the dark and the light of it, as the perfection of the divine play, if you like, and to love it and honor it and appreciate it and be grateful for being here, for just being here to witness this spectacle, to be part of this show, um, to be part of this miracle of existence. Um, and in the moment, in a state of um, active but optimalized relaxation within the skin, um, the Clear, clear, keen awareness that in this moment there is nothing missing. Everything is provided in this moment. You're here, you're breathing, you're experiencing. And therefore there is nothing lacking in this moment. And therefore you can presume that if you 
maintain a, an intention for life to continue evolving like this, um, it will continue to be with nothing missing. This also implies that you have to be able to hold to the perspective um, that transcends preferences for the easy over the difficult, the, the, the light over the dark, but a maturity instead that can accommodate the two and not identify with either. Because if you're going through a difficult phase in your life, um, if you identify with that, it can drag you all the way down and cause you so much stress you don't need to have. If you identify with the up when it happens, which it inevitably will because one always transforms into its opposite, uh, it can generate a certain fear because as a friend of mine said yesterday, when you're up a high place, there's a long way to fall. Whereas if you are disident or unidentified with either state, as if you're standing in the middle of a child's seesaw, making it go from side to side by bending your knees alternately, rather than sitting at either end with somebody balancing you out the other end, you're still enjoying the motion of the flux without being tossed out by it. You're able to maintain equilibrium. Um, in this state, you're then more prone to being of service to those around you by being kind, which derives from the, word, the same root as the word kin, in other words, by seeing everyone on the planet, however the, uh, the, the, they may appear different to you in, in various ways, as part of your human family. And therefore, to be of service is to offer a, a, a supportive, encouraging look, or a smile, or a little touch on the arm, or conversation, or whatever it takes. It could be that small, it could be something much bigger. But being of service, being here to help your brothers and sisters, um, and uh, to help everybody return to this state of heaven inside. That is what I would say, right, as a kind of just grabbing out of my brain here, that would be a description of creating a moment of heaven, which can be perpetuated by keeping on choosing it. We have to remember it's not just a one-off choice. The, the monkey mind, the, the part of the mind that sits in the front of the brain, by its very nature, jumps about and tries to distract you. That's its game. It does that. It depends on its existence for that. It has to keep doing that or there's no use for it and it would have to disappear. It doesn't want to do that, the monkey mind. Um, so there has to be ongoing vigilance or what they call today mindfulness. You have to be awake to what is actually occurring within you. That means you have to have developed proprioceptive sense, the ability to feel into your body what's occurring in your body right now and watch it as it changes and to keep catching yourself every time you get lost in the drama of the external world which you have to acknowledge is not actually what it is what it's what is appearing it's your interpretation of what you're experiencing through sense organs as the external world that's some that's um that that would be heaven now hell um, is when you get lost in the drama and you identify with the down, with the up, as it moves from one to the other. You're tossed around by the ever-moving um, dynamic of, the, of your experience and interpretation of the external world. Everything is in motion. Everything is subject to the play of light and dark, um, the, the yin and the yang. And when you're lost in it, when you're caught in it, even if you're going through a good bit, you are essentially in hell because you know that when you're going through a good bit and that's all there is, you are that good bit, you're going to fall and when you do, that's all there is, you've fallen. So if you've identified with either of those extremes or anywhere in between of it, in the external realm, you are living in, could be a bit of an extreme way of putting it, but you're living in hell. You've lost your, your footing in what you might romantically refer to as the divine realm. And what is beautiful and unique about Taoism, although it does have its correlation in Hatha Yoga at the deeper levels of practice, is that it re references the entire experience of being you to how you are situating yourself in your body, within your skin. So that if you situate yourself in a particular way, you have a totally different experience from when you situate yourself in a different way. Now, actually, most of the time, this is a choice between actively taking command of how you situate yourself in your body or being unconscious of it. 
it, it's not that you would choose consciously to situ yourself, situate yourself in a way that would make life feel horrible. So really it's the choice between being conscious and then taking the step to readjust yourself internally or being unconscious and therefore lost in the drama. But I'll, I'll, I'll clarify this in a, a little bit more in a moment. Um, for anybody who's not been to a satsang before, welcome to you. And uh, the, the, uh, the risk of being repetitive in my little gaffes here for anyone who has been here, welcome to you. Welcome to all of us. It's very beautiful. We sit here together all the way around the planet in every different, different time zone. Uh, there's something about time zones which appeals to me as opposed to geographic areas, because it's all such an illusion anyway. I like the idea of referring to time zones. It excites me, and I suspect maybe you too, just a little, or should we say titillate. Um, the word satsang derives from ancient Sanskrit and means when we come together in our truth, in our authenticity, without our artifice and pretense, without our compulsion to parade and to try and influence or impress those around us for the purpose of self-validation, um, it, it, rather than it being like the herd sinking to the lowest common denominator, we're freed of all the, uh, the herd mechanisms momentarily and are able to rise up to the biggest, most uh, profound levels of ourself and share that. We sit together in truth from the deepest, most um, uh, profound level of self which the Taoists and many other spiritual disciplines will tell you is synonymous with the Tao itself, with Brahma, with God, with the, the prime cause of all existence and non-existence. At the deepest level, this is actually found within the body. And um, we've grown up in the West believing that we're something separate from, not as good as, and therefore need to redeem ourselves and climb up to this divine realm, hence church spies pointing into the sky and so on. Um, in, in fact, the experience or the, 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 the only true experience we can have of the actual force that is driving us, the true force that is driving all of us as well as the planets and the solar systems and the galaxies, the entire multiverse, the only way we can really contact that is not through the intellect at all, not through the world of concepts or imagination, but through situating ourselves firmly within the skin and by doing so being privy to the correct energy flow that will trigger the awareness and that's what we're about to do. Uh, well, I talk about magic, I do, I do so partly tongue-in-cheek um, to give it a bit of a fairground, end of peer entertainment, uh, you know, a bit of pastiche around that. But also because in the deepest sense, magic, which derives from the ancient Persian makush, which means affecting shifts in external reality or in one's perception of external reality through intention. It's synonymous with uh, the Chinese phrase wu wei, which means effortlessly manifesting what is required uh, simply by intending it and then acquiescing to the flow and letting go. Um, it's based on the notion or the premise that Everything manifests, everything that is no longer in the undifferentiated absolute state is uh, a trick of the light, essentially. It's an illusion. So it, you remember, I don't know if you've been, uh, been, uh, been outside today, but you, you might have done, and if you were, you might well have noticed how lusciously green the grass is near you, for example. And no one would question that as being an invalid statement on my part. However, it is, because if you go a little deeper, there is no green at all. That's merely an interpretation. It's a, a frequency that the brain is perceiving through the sense organs, the eyes mostly, and translating into what we most commonly agree as is green. In other words, we're merely interpreting um, a, 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 an effect of motion uh, of energy frequencies that, that come in the form of sound, light, smell, and so on and so forth, touch, solid matter, and so on. Um, and because everything is fundamentally um, merely a description, it's fundamentally susceptible to rearrangement as a description, to total transformation as a description. And cutting a long story short, one of the basic axioms of metaphysics is that as you describe it to yourself, so it will be. So as you start to describe the experience of being here differently, 
the experience of being here will act upon you differently. In other words, your sense organs will still receive the same information, but the way your brain interprets that will change. And as a result of that, the energy that you transmit in response to the world around you, which is happening, it's just not happening as we think it is, uh, will change. And then the world around you, which in most of the time implies uh, other people, and to some extent animals, if you're around animals a lot, the uh, nature, if you're in nature or anyway, because we are all in nature, the environment, which includes the climate and everything else. Uh, it does seem to, and will in fact, respond to you differently when you describe it to yourself differently. That is what magic means. However, the recent rash of interest in such manifesting tricks that has been popularized uh, by various books of a fairly banal nature has inspired what um, you could call a spiritual materialism, a greed uh, using uh, techniques merely just to kind of perpetuate the trance of the material plane. You know, get rich if you do affirmations, visualize to have a relationship, uh, to get your intentions for to get doing better in your job, all of that kind of stuff, which does work, it does work, but it's not going to um, in any way address the the craving of the soul, which seeks um, the inner stability of being one with the unchanging, the background presence, the witness inside that observes the whole thing going on without grasping at anything external at all. There isn't anything external that will bring you anything more than external simulation. None of it will, and that's, no matter how deep, will actually fulfill your soul. It could distract it deeply, but it won't fulfill it. What fulfills it is situating yourself so that you're fully in the flow with the Tao, or God, or Rama, or Brahma, or however you want to refer to it. Uh, it's only names. And the, um, the Blue Lotus is a poetic um, uh, allusion to what the ancient Taoist um, uh, uh, practice, one of the techniques that was practiced, which is a, a drawing in of the flash bulb blue light um, a, 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 that is transmitted from the star Sirius, which if you're in the northern hemisphere, you will see on the southeast horizon um, at around about midnight, 1 p.m., or 1 a.m. in the morning at the moment. Uh, if you're a little bit further south it's towards the Mediterranean, it will come up earlier than that, so around about 10, 10 p.m. Uh, you'll see it on the southeast horizon at the kind of diagonally down from the, the, the bottom the corner of the rectangle of Orion's belt. And uh, it will move across the south, the southern sky to the west and then disappear before dawn. And it lasts until about um, Easter, in fact, uh, which is uh, interesting because Easter comes from the Babylonian word Ishtar, which is their word for Isis, which is what the Egyptians referred to uh, as Syria, uh, referred, uh, called Sirius. And there's been a long tradition of uh, telepathic communication with uh, some form of apparently superior uh, or you know more advanced um, species of aliens, obviously, who live somewhere around orbiting around that, that double star system of Sirius A and Sirius B. Um, all the ancient traditions, including the, the genesis of the, the Western Bible, have allusions to or direct references to visitations, telepathic communications, and apparently the greatest secret of the Masons, um, the Freemasons at the highest level, is that they have telepathic communication with that sort of entities on Sirius or near Sirius. That as it may be, I would never wish to impose anything like that as a, a belief, um, because stuff isn't about belief, about anything in particular, is that you've got to have belief, just the fact that you're here, that's a force, but to believe in anything is antithetical to Taoist practice. Um, but it, it doesn't matter if you believe it's true or not. It doesn't really make no difference because what we're doing is we're, we're channeling in a force. And once you give permission to a force to channel itself into you, it will do so. And um, it's reassuring to think that the ancient Taoists had a handle on this force that came from that star 8.6 light years away from, the, uh, from Earth. Um, as did many of the ancient cultures. And by doing so, it seems to just take away all the, the mental noise about what you're doing. 
you draw that flash of blue light into your body, into various places, and it will affect not only your physical health, it's a very powerful healing tool, um, it will also affect the, the balance of the way things are in you psycho-emotionally, uh, cleanse you of all disturbance and interference and static that you actually don't need there, and enable your true radiant spirit to shine as bright as it possibly can. Um, which, it, by extension, then affects everything in your external life and um, causes that to shine as bright as it can as well, rather than get in your way and obstruct you by reflection of the obstructions you have internally. And that is what we're going to be doing, my beloved family, here today. Um, we, you, could, you, it's the, you could see it as the super-intelligent, incisive um, intervention tool, and that's what, we're, that's what we're going to be channeling here. So what we're talking about is creativity, and although I started by talking about my own personal example of being an artist myself, um, it's not about how you spend your time um, in this sense, um, it's about what you, you, how you create your description of reality, how you create your most important art form, your life. Now this universe, or this multiverse, creates itself. That's how the Tao works. It creates itself. And when it appears in form, this is what it looks like. There is nothing separate from it. it. There is no sort of external force creating it. It creates itself. It's not removed from us and up in the sky, although it is in the sky as well because it's everywhere. It is all around us and within us. This is what it looks like when it creates itself. So if you want to see God around you, this is it. This is what good looks like on, on, on the earthly level. That's we kind of what we're talking about, the heaven on earth. This is it right now. That's what the Tao is. It creates itself, and this is the result. Um, or rather, as I said before, the result, as we each perceive it, through each our individual sets of filters, which are comprised of a unique set of beliefs and opinions and prejudices and preferences, judgments that comprise our description of reality. That's what the filter is. These are mostly predicated on a template we evolved as children, small children, where we didn't know much about the world, hence in a way fairly useless, but which are programmed in at such an early age, has at such a deep level, they still run us, despite how intellectually developed we may be, until we intervene as we are here. So each of us, um, as a unique human expression, of this spontaneous self-creating force, this Tao, this God, call it what you will, each of us has at our disposal the power to create our versions or descriptions of reality as we choose. Yeah, the majority, either through fear, laziness, lack of imagination, or just not knowing they can, seem, at least, merely to live their lives based on mimicry of their parents, who were themselves mimicking their parents and so on. Um, very few know how to, or appear to know how to, or appear to be willing to access the flair as well as the requisite courage, motivation and originality to create their versions of reality from scratch through what has to be said is a relatively long and challenging process of self-examination, um, awareness, attaining and maintaining a pan-dimensional alertness, in other words, being aware of all the dimensions that are operating inside of you simultaneously, not just the superficial, not just the secular, for example, but all of it, all of it, on every level. Um, um, the, and the reason that people are I'm willing, it would seem, I mean, I can't talk for anyone else, I'm only surmising, I might be completely wrong, and I'm walking around on a, a, a planet of absolute Buddhas, enlightened Buddhas who are just pretending on some level, that's true, of course. Um, but the reason that this, um, this uh, stubborn refusal to uh, connect with the deepest levels of self, self is seeming so prevalent at the moment is because people have disengaged from the, the original creative thrust um, at such a young age, and, and succumb to the trance, um, to varying degrees, of this mindless obedience to what has to be said is the lowest common denominator in the herd or their sector of, of the herd. Um, just as a 
clarity is the natural state. We did this last week, and I was saying clarity is the natural state which becomes apparent whenever you stop running interference on your own mind by clogging it and jarring it with endless self-destructive, self-restrictive internal debate. Creativity is the natural mode whenever you're not clamping down on your mind with excessive pragmatism for the sake of um, upholding the reasonable, rational adult model that insists on everything being neat and tidy and measurable and all being in perfect order when in fact we've got enough evidence over the millennia to see that it's absolutely impossible to keep things neat and tidy and in perfect order because all parts are moving and there's too many bits moving all at the same time to hold it all together. Now, creativity requires a degree of internal anarchy and chaos, you might call it insanity. Um, it requires a degree of craziness, uh, the willingness to desist from ascribing such dominance to this so-called rational mind that we have, uh, in my opinion more just like a, a, a rat mind. Um, it, it requires a willingness to live on the edge of safety, hence on the edge of danger. Uh, a willingness to eschew comfort, to eschew convenience, and to eschew dependence on any external factors, including relationships with other people, to provide any real, genuine, authentic, profound sucker to the soul. It doesn't mean by being willing to that you're going to, it just means that you have to have the courage to be willing to let go of these crutches for the adventure to be everything it can be. And that is after all what we're talking about. You use the creativity to create the adventure um, because if you're not on the adventure, what are you doing here? Um, creativity requires being willing to make a mess, uh, to be a mess, to move in a mess, when the flow takes you through mess, rather than try avoiding it, knowing that from um, the edge of too much mess to handle comes the miracle of the creative breakthrough. So it's often at the times when you think you're going a bit insane, too much for comfort, that you'll get that breakthrough, the creative breakthrough, when at the point of utmost despair, um, you just can't take it anymore, and yeah, I can't take this anymore. That is the moment you'll get your creative breakthrough because you've stopped holding on to a picture of how things should be. You've been scrambled enough to have to let go and go, okay, I'll let go. It requires being willing to throw yourself on the mercy of the Tao, on the mercy of the great flow, and to rely on its providence to bring you everyone and everything you need to live your life fully, rather than to remain enslaved and enthralled to, hence weakened by the need, or the apparent need, the illusory need for comfort and convenience. So by playing it safe, you become enslaved, essentially. Uh, by being habituated to playing it safe, to the extent you become habituated, is the extent to which you're enslaved and done it yourself. Hence, it requires uh, well-developed calm, connectedness, confidence, courage, and clarity, which happen to be the themes of the previous five sessions. But creativity is probably the quality that provides the key to expressing your so-called divine nature, the fullness of yourself, the most. I mean, after all, if the Tao, if, if there anything I'm saying resonates, and the idea of the Tao bursting into being, and this is what we're seeing all around us, uh, in which case you are a result of the Tao bursting into being as you, would the Tao have felt this impulse to be you? Would it have naturally, spontaneously felt this poof to burst into being you um, from nothing to express itself as this phenomenon uh, this miracle of existence called you, merely to experience through you a derivative, unoriginal, dull, marketed to, unimaginative, obedient, mediocre, self-limiting, cul-de-sac existence, which is what appears to be enough to lull most people into a complete and utter semi-psychotic trance. 
being the primary generative creative force, you'd imagine not. Now, creativity implies choice in each and every moment, as I said. The question is, do you create an experience of heaven for yourself, and hence for those around you, or an experience of hell in each and every moment? Now, heaven, in any given moment, despite how harsh conditions on the ground at the time, is attained to by relaxing, and breathing, and sinking, and expanding your mainframe, backshifting, so that you're behind the drama of the external yin-yang flux, opening your heart, appreciating the gift of all gifts being here, eschewing the compulsion, overriding the compulsion, to chase after the lesser gifts that we all believe are the biggest, but which in fact are really quite secondary to the main gift, which is you're here, um, and assert your intention and then asserting your intention to draw to you, by providence, all you need, moment by moment, in a state of grace, and to be a benefit to everyone you transact with, based on their also being an expression of presence, of this Tao, and for everything to evolve with utmost elegance. That would be a more succinct definition in this moment of what you can't define anyway, but an allusion to what I could imagine would be heaven. I just, that's how I describe my stay of heaven. Now, hell, in any given moment, is what you get by default when you remain in the front of your body, forwards of the side seams, in a state of cognitive dissonance, uh, deluded in believing that you're identified with the drama of the yin-yang flux of that movement of the seesaw where even the sweet aspects are actually sour when you take the lid off, where nothing can feed your soul, merely distract you from your pain momentarily, chasing after illusory lesser gifts, mistakenly believing that that's what you're here to do, the money, the status, the fame, the good looks, this, the that, and all the other superficial aspects of existence, when in fact you already have the greatest gift of all, the greatest gift you will ever possibly have, being here. And then in this deluded state, perpetuating the same for everyone around you, because that's how it works. We mimic each other. So if you're running about, excuse the cliche, like a headless chicken, chasing stuff that is pointless, really, because you've already got the big gift, um, you will influence those around you to do the same. And then look about you. I don't think it's just my own spurious subjective um, view that tells me this seems to be the more prevalent mode. Um, and it, it's not a once and for all switch that we're going to switch on here, but something you must exercise discipline for to keep making that switch in each and every moment. With practice, it gets easier and really becomes actually automatic. And then, by and by, what happens is that you tend to default to the state of heaven in each and every moment, in state of the state, instead rather of the state of hell. Um, so first we'll be doing that, and um, then we'll deploy the flash bulb blue light for want of something for the mind to focus on. Um, this can be done without even assuming any form of, of apparently external force, um, but it does make it easier. This is a, a, if it's only a technique, it's one that's worthwhile practicing. My experience of it is, my sense of it for what it's worth, it is more than a technique. I'm with those ancient Taoists and the ancient Egyptians and the Mayans and the Dogons in Timbuktu and all the ancient tribes that um, suggest quite uh, clearly that there is something coming power-wise from that region of the sky. Um, we will be using it to open wide the energy channels um, that are in charge of the creative impulse uh, this is an old Taoist trick, it comes from the Taoist alchemical process, and thereby connect you, each of us, to your muse, which is a way of describing the source of all creativity as it comes through you. Then we'll deploy it to instigate a series of constant leaps, or what we might call miracles of creativity, causing you to be progressively more um, exponentially growing into the fullness of your creative, original, unique expression in every area and aspect of your life, 
so that your life from this moment on naturally evolves into the full-blown adventure and magnificent art form you're here to enjoy. So if that proposition uh, meets with your consent, your concurrence, um, this will be the moment to divest yourself of all associations with the, um, your descriptions of the external world, which you can help along by dropping your eyelids. And as you drop your eyelids, exhale. And as you exhale, release the first layer of tension from your system. Um, you uh, allow, as you do this, the weight of your head and your shoulders and your chest to sink down where it wants to go, below the level of your navel. So that already you're sitting quite firmly and solid and heavy in your seat. And all the weight is sort of in your buttocks and in your legs, so you're solid. And in this solidity of the lower half of the body, you allow yourself a, a, an awareness that the crust of the earth supporting you is relatively extremely thin, beneath which is a nuclear-powered reactor. Power is so huge we can't comprehend it. Um, which is a part of the mechanism of this planet spinning on its axis at a thousand miles an hour right now while zooming around the sun in an orbital um, motion at 66,000 miles an hour. And that's just our planet going around the sun. It doesn't account for the sun moving around the galaxy and the galaxy moving through space. It's a, 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 an imponderable amount of kinetic power beneath your feet. And by sinking your weight, you're saying hello to that, hello you become one with it at a very subtle, discrete level. Nonetheless, it starts to fill you from the soles of your feet up through your body. To um, allay the possibility of slumping as a result of this sinking, just imagine someone who has attached a hook to the crown of your head and is pulling, by virtue of an invisible silver thread tied to it, the crown of your head upwards towards the ceiling which elongates the back of your neck, and it elongates the entire spinal column. This is important because this is your main central strut, and it's the pathway for the main flow of energy through your body. Um, I'm going to refer in a moment to us being queens and kings of our own inner realm, um, sitting back in our internal thrones. Just for a start, take an image of a king or a queen, a traditional one, and they'll always be depicted in their throne, leaning right back. The reason for this, apart from the obvious power play of becoming of being more important than the person, the subject who kneels before them, and so to keep establishing that that uh, uh, dominance um, by not having to lean forward, but to have the other lean into them, um, is that you, your spine serves as an antenna that's connecting you from uh, between the power of heaven and the power of earth, which according to Taoism, which is your main function. So elongate the spine, now allow your shoulder girdle to drop, by, by, with which you drop your entire burden, your life story, this whole weight of this mass of descriptions uh, that you've ascribed to your perception of reality. Just drop it, drop your shoulders. And as you drop them, you can feel them broadening. And to counter the chest caving in, very, very slightly, slightly raise your breastbone. Just slide it up a little bit, half a millimeter, without arching your back. And that will give you an extra air of dignity, which means literally uprightness. Now, you've expanded your mainframe, the, the physical mainframe. You can now attend to all the, the muscles and the sinews and the fabric of the mainframe. And give the command to the entire muscular system and the connective tissue system to soften now. Normally it's held taut unnecessarily to an unnecessary degree as a, an instinctual mechanism of self-protection. Um, in this moment we're all safe as far as we know. There is nothing to fear. We're all in each other's good company. Um, we can relax. So just give the commands to the entirety of your muscular system and your connective tissue system to let go of any redundant uh, rigidity, because the softer you are, the more the chi, the energy, the blood will flow through you. You can visualize, if you like, a, a, a rich golden fluid pouring down through the top of your head like treacle, and wherever it goes, it has the magical effects of softening all tension. 
So they're from the top of your head, down through your arms to your fingertips, down through your shoulders, your chest, your belly, your back, your buttocks, through your legs to the tips of your feet, your toes. You are soft and relaxed. But you're not floppy because your the main frame has been set at optimal um, in the optimum position. Now attend to the most direct lever you have on your state of mind, your breathing, and uh, stop holding your breath. And let your breath flow. Allow the diaphragm to relax along with all the other muscles and become aware of your belly rising as the air comes in and your belly falling as the air is expelled. Become aware of the quality of the breathing and rather than it be noisy and rough, allow it to be silent and smooth, silken. Become aware of the tempo of the breathing and rather than it be intermittent, uh, irregular, uneven between the in and the out breath, allow it to be slow. Allow the in and the out breath to be of equal duration. And by the time you've done all that, you'll notice that the tone of mind has slowed down, has become more smooth, silent, more silken, more congenial. And now you have the big move to make. You uh, would normally be finding yourself situated everywhere forward of your side seams. You would normally be occupying the front part of your body and the front part of your brain. This because your sense organs face forwards and therefore you perceive the world as occurring in front of you because the world is a, a potentially chaotic, disorderly place that appears to need ordering constantly uh, because it's riveting, exciting, frightening, stimulating and all the rest of it, it draws you forwards into the front of your body. However, the front of your body is a noisy, weak and vulnerable place and it's where all the noise is going on, the emotional conflicts in the belly, the constriction in the heart and the throat and the incessant debate occurring in the front of the brain. However, by shifting yourself rearwards of your side seams, which it is your entitlement to do in each and every moment, now for example, and leaning back into your shoulder blades and into the front part of your spine and into your rear pelvic bones and your sacrum and allowing your mind to rest against the rear wall of your skull like a little Buddha with your face on it, you find that you've instantaneously acquired the qualities of your back which are silence, stillness and strength. And in the back, because there is no noise, there is no drama, there is no sense of this vision self that you have confected over the years and have deluded yourself into believing is you. Instead, in its place, there is that aspect of you that we might call the witness bearer or background present. That part of you that will say when things are getting really difficult, it's okay, this character building. Or when things are getting really good, it's okay. Don't get too attached to it because you know that's going to be a thing and it will be fine and so on and so forth. Or when you've just come through something really difficult, it's that part of you that goes, wow, well done, you did that really well. <clears throat> and so on and so forth. It's the part of you that was observing without preference as you came through the birth canal and had your fontanelles scrunched uh, as, it, as they passed through the cervix that had its first, the shock of that first rush of air, um, that part of you that when um, the parents, uh, unwittingly and, and no doubt benignly, were inducting you into the trance of obedience, there was that part of you saying, yeah, but I know this is a human construct and this is not ultimately um, valid. There was that part of you that did know and has always known. Um, and able, has been able to differentiate between human construct and absolute reality because it is of absolute reality. It's the deepest part of you that will be there when you die and will watch you die and will come out the other side as you pop through the veil. That's what will be remaining of you. This is the background presence. This is what the Taoists call your immortal spirit body. And when situated in your back like this, breathing in the front, you feel that in the front there is the res residue of that emotional tension in the belly, of course. You feel that there is the residue of the echoes fading away of that noise going on in the front of the brain all the time, but it's not actually you anymore. It's just a phenomenon occurring in the front. Um, you are aware that you're breathing in and breathing out and that, that everything passes, including this phenomenon that you've grown to think of as you, and that nothing here is has any ultimate validity, and all of it is merely 
a pastime, a game that we're all playing while we're hanging around waiting to die, which is not nihilistic in any sense at all. Um, the idea that death is the enemy that must be beaten is one of the facets of modern psychosis and how we've done everything possible to avoid this has actually landed us in a more and more precarious situation. The accommodation of death as a friend, as a reality, gives you perspective and sharpens the focus of your appreciation in each and every moment for being alive. And this is possible when you're in your back, because it's this part of you that was never born, will never die, so it knows that death is an illusion. Hence the Tao is saying, when you, happen, when you die, rather nothing happens. Or I could say that when you happen, nothing dies, which is good. Um, the uh, heart area, which is the, the, the vessel, if you like, through which your love radiates, the, and I mean your love is in the unique, beautiful essence that is you, that was you as a newborn baby, that inspires your mother and your father to go, oh, you're so beautiful, I love you so much, that you can inspire that love in somebody, that's still you. It's got booted, it's got disguised, it's got covered over, of course, but it is still who you are. And you can radiate that freely, with impunity, by visualizing the two halves of your breastplate opening like a pair of sliding doors so that your unique beautiful gift is now free to radiate which is its nature to do so allow it visualize it if you like like a rose gold vapor smelling of roses and frangipani of the most amazing um, quality uh, like a rose gold light a vapor moving out in all directions to everyone in this circle to everyone that everyone in this circle knows, to everyone that everyone they knows, and so on and so forth, until it spreads in ever-increasing concentric circles to every sentient being, not just human, on this planet and beyond, no limit. Simultaneously doing so, you are availing yourself of the potential of that love being transmitted by anyone and everyone who is currently doing so, uh, specifically everyone in our circle right here, all the way around the world. And now we're ready, now we're ready. So just you're breathing, you're breathing, you're breathing. The first thing we're going to do is to cleanse the noise, the residue of the noise in the front brain and the front of the body, which would normally uh, fuel the self-consciousness that prevents true creativity and original thought. Visualize entering through the crown of your head but actually the front of the crown of your head, just at the top of the hair, they're just behind the hairline, at the top of the forehead, um, an opening, which is where the front fontanelles are. And imagine that you can see approximately 8.6 light years away, which is quite a way, quite a distance, a shaft of light that has taken nearly nine years to get to you, coming with um, huge force, uh, velocity, amplitude, um, but like a, a laser stream from a star, Sirius, or whichever one you want it to be, but I suggest Sirius, in through the crown, at the top of the front of the crown, and it's coming in with such power that it immediately floods the area behind the forehead, so that the prefrontal lobes, the front of the brain where you're normally having all the discussions with yourself, is being completely cleansed with this bright, bright flash bulb blue light. It's almost white, but there's just this it's so bright that it has that blue tinge to it. And it's cooling. It's cooling down all the, the heat that has come off without running interference on yourself. It's quelling any urge to run interference on yourself. It is washing, damping down all the static that has been coming off that and quietening all the noise so that all there is is this beautiful flash bulb blue bright light filling your prefrontal lobes. You are sitting well behind that in the rear of your brain as if sitting in the back of the cave, just marveling at this beautiful, beautiful brightness in the front of the brain. And it's still pouring in through the top of the forehead there with such force that it's moving while remaining in the uh, prefrontal lobes, moving downwards through the throat and uh, into the chest. And as it passes through the throat, it cleanses the throat of all withheld, distorted, false communication energy that's got up there. All the blockages and the inability to say what you feel to say when you need to say it in the appropriate way, all washed away. And all the heat that comes from block communication energy getting stuck in the throat, 
being cooled all the way down, all the filth from that being washed away, and the throat being completely and utterly clear and filled with this hugely bright flashbulb blue light. While it remains there and in the forehead, it's still pouring through the top of the forehead with such velocity, amplitude and intensity that it's now filling up your chest as well. From the top of your chest to the side of your chest to the center of your chest to the bottom of your chest, the whole of your thorax is now filled with this almost blinding bright flash bulb blue light, which is clearing away all residue of the um, guarding and the self-protection and the isolating and the alienating that's done by closing over the heart center. It's washing away all the debris of all the hurt that has been dished out to you and all the hurt that you wish to dish out to others. All the poison from that that has collected um, in the chest has been cleansed. This of course is also extremely good if you're on a physical health level as well. And the chest is now filled with such bright blue light that that's all there is. You're sitting behind it, your heart area is wide open. In the midst of this blue light, the rose gold vapor that represents your love is still flowing freely and is free to continue doing so without interruption forevermore now, if you wish. And while this is happening, and the front of the brain and throat and the chest are filled with this flashlight, flash bulb blue light, the light is still pouring in through the crown, the front of the crown down, such the force that is also filling your belly, the solar plexus, and all the way down behind your pubic bone, and filling up the whole of the pelvic floor, so that all that emotional tension and the conflict with your own primal drives is being washed away. All that um, poison that accumulates from the conflict with yourself, with the different dimensions of self, with the different aspects of self, with the information coming through to you all the time, all that is being cleansed and washed away so that all that remains is this beautiful, beautiful, bright blue, clean, flashbulb bright light filling your entire belly. Now, you're sitting back behind all of that and all of the fronts of you, the front of your brain and all the way through the front is completely and utterly clear of that fictional self and all the stress and static associated with it. It's blissful, enjoy it and say, I accept it, I accept it. I accept it. Be back inside, keep flying backwards so that you're leaning back against your shoulder blades, you're leaning back against your spine, you're leaning into your rear pelvic bones and your sacrum, and you're leaning your head back into the rear of the cave, the, the back of the skull there. And the weight of the upper body going down through to the lower body is making you sit firmly in the throne as well. You're sitting right down and right back inside and you're breathing and everything is clear. Your love is flying, you're receiving the love of others. Now, focus again on the blue light coming into the front of the forehead, the top of the forehead there. And very slowly, like a laser operating upon you, guide that or allow that blue light to move backwards along the midline of your crown to the crown of the head and then back from there downwards to the base of the skull. And keep breathing as you do so. So the light is now pouring in through the front of your forehead, moving backwards over the crown of the head, back down to the occiput at the base of the skull, right in the center there. And as it's done so, it started to open up the two halves of the skull, uh, metaphorically speaking, energetically speaking. Now, trace that blue light, this by an act of will and a gentle exhalation, or rather shunt that blue light from the back of the skull over to the, uh, upwards the, in the opposite direction to the crown, and then forwards through the midline of the skull, the top of the skull, uh, to the top of the forehead, and then further from there down to between your eyebrows. And now you have a line of blue light that's gone from the center of the top of your forehead back over the crown of your head to the base of your skull and then being sent the other way forwards uh, over the top of the skull down to the center of the forehead. Um, again, increasing the um, opening of the two halves of the skull. Now breathe in and draw that light backwards to over the skull again down to the base of the skull and then breathe out and shunt the light forwards again and then breathe in and 
draw it backwards and then breathe out and draw it forwards and all the while the light is pouring in through the crown the top of the, the front of the crown filling up the front of your body and making itself available for this operation and keep doing that as you breathe in the light goes to the back of the skull as you breathe out it moves to the front of the forehead and you keep doing that and it's progressively opening the two halves of the head so it's like a pair of sliding doors and a missile silo opening and it's making the top of your the, the, the top of your brain um, if you like, open and, and exposed to what is going to now be a creative torrent of energy, an energy a, a torrent of creative energy, a cylindrical stream of light that is essentially white but is flecked with every color of the rainbow, containing all the information you need um, in potential to fuel every move that you need to make for the rest of your life with the optimal amount of creative originality so that the adventure that ensues becomes progressively and exponentially more exciting, huger, more spectacular, more magnificent, more fulfilling and more rewarding. And this is on the most subtle discrete level to so the most huge and, and out there level. There's no, there's no sense of scale in this. Every, every step that you take, however tiny, is huge. Um, and every step you take, however huge, is tiny. Um, it's all just motion and, 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 as I say, illusion. And up for grabs can be completely transformed by what we're doing here. And meantime, this, this torrent of white light, which is coming from the muse, the source of all orig of original thought, uh, there's no need to define where this comes from. It's got nothing to do with Sirius in this moment. That light was just brought in for the surgery, if you like. Uh, this is coming through, and it's filling every cell of your brain. It's moving down into your body and filling you so profoundly that it's actually um, suffused your very bone marrow. So that the entire inner landscape of you is now completely suffused with this brilliant bright white light um, that is itself imbued with the very essence of pure original creativity. To be expressed however your form chooses to express it for the highest good for you and everyone around you. Now, um, having cleansed yourself and opened up the top of the head to receive what now can be a continual stream of creativity, um, there's no need to close the top of the head up again. The idea is to keep it open. This is common to the Hopis, the Taoists, and to pretty much everybody, um, all, all the ancient traditions. Um, focus again on the the blue light coming in from Sirius into the top of your forehead and with a sort of as if you've got an, a mirror that you angle like a valve that you can turn project that light that's streaming in onto w what you're seeing as the projection of your life so you see your life spread out in front of you spread out all around you um, as you perceive it at the moment to be and to look like it's going to develop. You people it with all the people that are close to you, all the people that you work with, all the people that you might work with, not that you know their identities, all the people that might be close to you, again, not that you know their identities, but a sense of their presence. Um, all the rest of the human family as well out to the distance there, um, you, you, you populate it with all the activities that you know that you're going to be partaking or presume you're going to be partaking in, say, the week ahead over the next two weeks and the challenges or even longer and the challenges that you perceive um, facing you and the areas of learning that are going to be required, the areas of development that are going to be required, the areas that are going to require attention, the areas that you uh, derive your most joy from, your pleasure from, and your love, your 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 physical pleasures, your 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 all of that stuff, the joys of the world, the fruits of the world, and you shine this light into that projection. You can slightly move your head from side to side and see that, like a searchlight, um, splashing down on absolutely every aspect of your uh, perception of your your complex of description of your life as you're perceiving it. And you might see, symbolically say, a channel coming to that scene, which is the channel through which your material wealth um, comes in. And you can shine the flashbulb flash blue light onto that channel to clear it 
of any blockages and so that you can now see the flow of wealth, however that looks, ones and zeros or uh, uh, notes or, or coins or gold bullion or whatever you want to see it as, really zooming down that, that stream, that sheet towards you and collecting all around you in your life. Um, you can see if you like a, a channel that brings, into, brings to your life all the love that you need, the companionship, the friendship, the joy that comes from transacting with other people. And you can shine the blue light onto that and cleanse that of all debris that's blocking its way, either caused by others or yourself, so that the way is totally clear. And you can now see that the, the energy of people, however you want to represent that, as hearts, if you like, and just uh, or whatever comes to mind to represent the love that you share with your companions, your beloveds, and so on, moving at a huge rate now towards you, totally unblocked. Um, you can see a channel, if you like, that represents the flow of healing energy into your life, that's fantastic, super intelligent healing energy that will correct all imbalances and relieve you of all of some symptoms. As another a, a, a channel through which you, onto which you shine the blue light, and clear away all that might be blocking it, so that health is coming to you at an unprecedented uh, velocity and amplitude and, and, and potency. So your body is being healed more and more effectively as you go along. And any other area of your life, say your professional life, where you're being blocked by people or you've got things going on that you need to deal with that are difficult, visualize that as a channel coming into the scene and that you're shining the blue light onto that. And it's clearing all the debris, all the detritus that's resulted from years of doing things one way and people getting in the way and all the stuff that happens, being cleansed completely of that. And now the energy that represents clear professional progress, whatever that looks like to you, um, zooming down the chute into your the scene that you're describing to yourself as your life, until you can see the entirety of your life as you're seeing it in this moment, um, absolutely suffused, the whole scene suffused with this blue light, cleansed of all mess, all obstacle, all programs that would otherwise get in the way of your full expression and enjoyment. And therefore, you absolutely free to live with total originality and creative thought from moment to moment, rather than just mimicking and following along um, mindlessly. There you are now. You're in your back. You have supreme power to manifest anything you want now through intention. Um, you're joined to everyone in this circle all the way around the world, bearing witness to you doing so. So this exponentially multiplies the power of your intention right now. And you are in a privileged state. We are all in a privileged state, suffused with this beautiful, clean, bright blue light that is now cleansed us of all detritus and mess and distortion and static. We are, to all intents and purposes, my family, angels in the ether all the way around the planet. And we are therefore, um, it behooves us therefore to radiate this blessing that we have manifested for ourselves onto the surface of the planet which we can visualize in our midst as big angels would do so that it splashes down on the surface as it's coming from all of us it goes everywhere all at once like a, a sea that is suddenly rushing over the face of the earth and is touching every single sentient being on the planet right now with no desire for it to have any particular effect other than it be healing and ubiquitous and totally unjudgmental so that it reaches everyone no matter how evil they may appear, how completely lost they may appear, and so on and so forth. It's touching everybody without prejudice, so that the entirety of our human family is getting a healing at this very moment, and uh, are being reconnected with the source of true creativity, so that rather than follow along dangerous, destructive, silly uh, social means, everyone is starting to respond from their true creative impulse. And now, very quickly, simultaneously be in your body on the planet as one of the people receiving this beautiful blessing of healing from the angels and allow it in through every pore of your skin. Let it fill you all the way down to your bone marrow where there is already a lot going on to activate all the energies that we've really brought in and trigger them to the next level of um, magnitude in, in the way that they're operating inside of you. Um, this has been pure Taoist magic, and our rewards for partaking of it will be manifold and limitless.
they will come in the form of beautiful surprises, I completely unexpectedly, so there's no need to grasp at any of this, simply to let go, trust the flow to be benign, and allow providence to bring you everyone and everything you need. And in your own time, this is the time to start bringing yourself into the so-called everyday state, to wriggle your fingers, wriggle your toes, wriggle your ears, and wriggle your nose, wriggle your eyelids, come back to the asking question mode, and we can get it going with a little bit of Q&A, for which I hand over to our esteemed producer, Sue. Hello. How about that? All in one, one breath, that little note. What was that saying? <laughs> that was a really deep set song. Good, yeah, I was well gone with that myself. Okay, um, Jane has a couple of comments for you. She says, when I close my eyes, it isn't dark. I see a light show, and yesterday it was like looking up into the night sky with golden rain falling down. Thank you so much for this amazing series. Oh, Jane, bless you. You're so welcome. That, that's a really good sign that you're seeing light when you close your eyes. That's the key that you are getting it. You're getting into that problematization state. That's beautiful to hear. Thank you. Uh, Jane had another comment, actually, um, which I'm just trying to find. Oh, yes, she said, what a spectacular satsang. Thank you, Doc. This is just the stuff I'm dealing with right now. Perfectly synchronous, love and light. Oh, bless you, Jane. I'm so happy. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Gabby, likewise, says, thank you. This was, of course, perfectly timed. <laughs> yeah, good. You're welcome. And Prina says, as a creative artist, I totally agree with the doc's definition of creativity. He is right. There is a lot of disorder in doing things. Yeah, I'm wrong with you. And we have to be willing to go into that mess, don't we? Um, take it right to the edge. In fact, I think we can't help it once really engaged in the event, in any creative pursuit, whether it's something specific or the whole life as the art form. Um, it's inevitable that we will have to... Um, uh, uh, encounter chaos, um, or what this to be chaos. That's where the, that's where it comes from. That's where the gifts come from. We we are warriors, aren't we? Um, Peter said, "Thank you so much, BD. This was beautiful." Yeah, I mean, it was, wasn't it? Thanks, Peter. I mean, I don't say that arrogantly. I mean, yeah, I felt it as well as a participant. I'm, I'm not with you. And Malkit says, "Thank you, Stephen. This was the most powerful session, and thank you for transmitting love." Oh, you lovely woman. It's so lovely you're here, that you're coming to the store. That's beautiful. I'm really glad you're here. Thank you. Rosie says, thank you, thank you, thank you again, BD, for another amazing session. I feel totally glowing now. Oh, thank you, Rosie. You know I mean, I've got to say, you and everybody, it's amazing because you're all here. That's what makes it amazing. It wouldn't be happening otherwise. So thank us all, really, and thank you especially for saying that. And Maureen says, perfect. No need to say more. Oh, yeah. As are you, my friend. As are you. <laughs> and Victoria says, phew, utterly awash, profoundly pitched, amazing, deep thanks. Nice one. Yeah, I know. We did this one, didn't we, Victoria? And Sieglinde says, saved my life again and not just mine. <laughs> nice. And Dorcas says, get down and roll around in the mud. Make mud pies. Blessings all around. Blessings all around. <laughs> yeah, may it not be my pies for dinner, though, that's for sure. And uh, Gabby says, well, that was utterly fantastic. Thank you. What a flow you had there. These last few days I have felt so much that I've stepped right out of my own way, and this continuing over days rather than alternate days has seemed to be up to now. Creatively, I have found the flow of my creative priorities and just know what to do next. Instead of hesitating and questioning if you should do this first or that, I just know what to do. It's fantastic at last. New big ideas and inspiration is dropping in. It's so exciting, just wonderful, and I want to fully thank you for your incredible work that has shown me how this really works. I'm really excited to feel the next boost of this blue light creativity session. I'm sure there will be further fluctuations but I now I know now just what it was that I let go of to feel this. So much love and magic to you, wonderful mentor, and all the other mirroring angels here. Oh, you really touched my heart, Kathy. That's beautiful. Thank you. Spoken like a true artist. Bless you. And that is that. We have no How questions. Wonderful. We just have comments today. When I did my first ayahuasca ceremony in Ibiza in mountains, 
that I felt obliged at some point to ask the spirit that does definitely sort of reveal itself before one's eyes. Uh, is there like a question I should be asking? And it just kind of said, oh, no, you don't have any questions. And before I had a chance to say anything, there are no answers as well. Stop playing that dark game. Stop it. That, that's the feeling I get at the end of this. It just is what it is, isn't it? Thank you so much for being here, everybody. It's so beautiful. Bless you. For us to come together like this as a family around the world, what a privilege. It's just gorgeous. Thank you so much. And bless you. Bye.